This is the Internet Anomalies file. It's basically a chart that outlines many different abnormal and weird things from around the internet. Things that someone might call anomalies. Some of the stuff on here is pretty unsettling, some of the stuff on here is just kind of funny, and some of the stuff on here is deeply strange. And so I thought it would be fun to make a video where we just go through everything on here. You could probably make an entire video about any single one of these topics, but today I'm just going to talk about the most important elements and ideas from each of these topics. Sometimes I might go a little bit more into detail on things if it's interesting or kind of funny. You know me, we're doing some Minecraft death run b-roll footage today. And let me tell you, while putting together this video, I found myself on some of the weirdest parts of the internet. And I care about protecting my online privacy, and that's why I use a VPN, which leads us to today's sponsor, NordVPN. Your internet service provider likely has records of all of your internet activity. And on top of that, bad actors can track you by monitoring your internet traffic. NordVPN is a tool that can be used to protect yourself from these issues. Because NordVPN will encrypt your internet traffic, making it hard to snoop on what you're doing. On top of being a useful VPN, NordVPN has introduced a new feature called Threat Protection, which will help block malicious websites, block intrusive ads, and it will even scan files for malware during downloads. Using NordVPN is also very simple and straightforward. You just download the app, sign in, and hit Quick Connect, and you'll be automatically connected to a server that will encrypt your internet traffic. If you go to NordVPN.com, slash parallel pipes you can save a significant amount of money when you sign up currently nordvpn is celebrating its birthday and so they're providing a special birthday deal the two-year plan is over half off plus you get an extra month for free or you can just go into the description of this video and hit this link to get that deal Thoth93 Robot God. So there's a YouTube channel called Thoth93 Robot God, and this channel sports some of the most overstimulating, brain rotting, and cryptic videos the internet has to offer. I'm gonna show you guys a couple quick clips so you guys understand what's going on in these videos. Before I even try and talk about these, I gotta make sure you guys are on the same page. And I'm just gonna show you the first couple seconds of a few videos, but it's important to understand that they continue on like this for three, four, five minutes. Okay, this video is called Possibly Interpretable. Okay, this one's called Simple with Kraft Macaroni and Cheese Dinner. Okay, this one's called Enlarged Incomparability. Seriously, I dare you to go to this channel and try and make sense of any of this. Most of the videos on this channel are like the stuff I've already shown you. It's these videos of super insanely complicated patterns of things, and trying to make any sense of it feels pretty crazy. There's barely any discussion of this channel you can find online, so nobody really seems to know what's going on here. I don't even know where to begin when trying to break down the videos on this channel. As you guys have seen from what I've shown you, these videos typically contain imagery related to religion, and mathematics and video games and the matrix and anime and a ton of other stuff too and you guys haven't seen this from what I've shown you but this channel and all the videos on it put a lot of emphasis on the number 93 and this could be suggesting a ton of different things and so I'm not even gonna get into it it seems like quite a bit of effort was put into these videos some of them are so complex who knows how long the production takes most of the descriptions in these videos seem to be gibberish nonsense but you could say that maybe some of them seem to suggest that there are hidden or subliminal messages in these videos. If there really is hidden messages in these videos, I have no idea where you'd even begin when it comes to deciphering these hidden messages. Something probably worth mentioning is there are a select few videos on this channel that are a little more tame and kind of a departure from the typical style of video, but even these videos still don't really make any sense. They're pretty much incoherent and the descriptions are still filled with incomprehensible ramblings. I've seen some people say that at some point Thoth93 Robot God had some accounts on some adult websites and was uploading videos there, but apparently they've since deleted all those videos and now they're just on YouTube. If that whole thing's true, which I'm not 100% sure, it's definitely an interesting choice to make. Considering everything on this channel, if I had to make a guess for what's going on here, I would say either whoever's behind this channel might not be in the best place right now, or alternatively, the videos on this channel were made with the intention of them being art, and this art is just very confusing and 
and misleading. But who knows, maybe these videos are part of some secret MK Ultra mind controlling program. Philip Schneider. Phil Schneider was a man who claimed to be an ex-government engineer who helped build deep underground military bases in the United States. He gave presentations at expos and conferences. Videos of these presentations he gave have been circulating online for some time now. And throughout his presentations, he made some pretty bold claims. He made a lot of claims about the supposed deep underground military bases in the United States. Right now there are 131 active deep underground military bases in the United States. Basically a city underground, roughly four and a quarter cubic miles hollowed out underground. Each one is uh, built in the site. Uh, oh, it used to be it'd take a year to two years to build each one. And now they're capable of building a couple of them a year. He's claimed that there's 11 different races of aliens that visit Earth. There are 11 distinct races of aliens. Two are benevolent. He's made a lot of other pretty crazy claims, too. One of the more notable things about Phil Schneider is he's missing two fingers and his thumb, and he's claimed that he got these injuries from fighting an alien. All I remember is that he just kind of waved his hand in front of his chest. And the next thing I know, this blue beam hit me and just literally opened me up like a fish. And every, uh, burnt, burnt my fingers right off of me. Now, from what I can tell, it looks like most of his claims are pretty much baseless. His evidence is just trust me, bro. It also looks like some of his personal information doesn't line up with his story. But you can find people online who seem to believe in this guy and like what he says. There's a lot of different stuff you could talk about with this guy, but I'm going to talk about one of the more interesting leads. A YouTuber who at the time went by the name Joe from the Carolinas was investigating the whole Philip Schneider thing, and apparently him and his team sent in some Freedom of Information Act requests to some government agencies agencies to see if they could get more information on Phil Schneider. And it turns out the FBI actually had some pretty interesting information on this guy, but probably not what you were expecting. According to these documents that were acquired through a FOIA request, in 1969, Philip Schneider spent time at the Damasch State Hospital in Wilsonville, Oregon, and was characterized as schizophrenic. This document goes on to say that under stress, Schneider would mutilate himself for self-attention and had amputated two fingers and a thumb. That would explain the whole missing fingers thing. This document also says that at one point Schneider was keeping approximately 300 pounds of radioactive material at his residence under his bed in his room. So he definitely wasn't the most stable individual. I probably should just say this for transparency's sake though. When it comes to these FOIA request documents on Phil Schneider, I can't 100% confirm they're real. I don't really think Joe from the Carolinas would forge these documents, and I haven't really seen anything that would suggest that they are fake to my knowledge. Three different sources have told me these are real. You know, looking over them, I would say they look pretty good. But I'm not really an expert on FOIA requests and all the legal stuff surrounding this topic. And so to keep it a buck fifty with you guys, I'm probably not the guy to tell you if these are real or not. Lose Lose. Lose Lose is a game developed by a man by the name of Zach Gage. And just looking at gameplay of it, it kind of looks like your typical Galaga-like shooter. But this game has a catch. And the catch is, every time that you kill an alien in-game, the game will delete a random file off of your computer. Any file is fair game. This game can totally delete important system files. The game can even potentially delete itself while you're playing it. What the it. hell? It got rid of itself. Doveland. I'll kind of just cut to the chase here. There is a really obscure myth or legend on the internet about how at some point in Wisconsin there was a town by the name of Doveland, but at some point, some people say in the 90s, it mysteriously went missing. I've seen a couple comments from people who claim to have been from Wisconsin and remember this place or remember hearing about this place, and there is always the possibility that the people in these comments could be honest, but I've also seen quite a few comments from people claiming that they've lived in Wisconsin and they've never heard of Doveland before. I have looked far and wide on the internet and I've found no documentation of this place ever existing. I've seen a couple comments online that claim that there exists merchandise of this place, and I guess this merchandise proves that it existed at some point. Looking into this, you can actually find merchandise of Dublin, Wisconsin, but all the merchandise you can find of Dublin, Wisconsin online is not old, it's recently made. You can find who manufactured it. The design on all these pieces of merchandise look like something that was like quickly thrown together on custom ink, so I suspect that someone decided to make this merchandise to try and profit off of this mystery. Probably one of the most suspicious parts of 
about Devland, Wisconsin is the earliest mention of it that I can find on the internet comes from one of these conspiracy theory iceberg charts. And so this kind of suggests that maybe the entire concept of Devland, Wisconsin was made up just for one of these charts. When it comes to whether or not this place existed, it's possible that maybe this was just like a kind of like a one horse town or just like a town with like one family in it that wasn't like officially recognized by the government. So once the family moved away, the town kind of disappeared with it. But at this point, I'm kind of leaning towards, yeah, this place probably never existed. It might just be an urban legend or even more likely it was probably made up by someone for one of these conspiracy theory iceberg charts. But I can't really confirm this. So if any of you guys watching this uh, grew up in Wisconsin, uh, have you heard of Dublin? surveillance cameraman. So in 2013, a channel was created on YouTube called Surveillance Cameraman, and the videos that were on this channel are not up anymore. They've since been taken down. But the videos that were on here at one point are pretty interesting. I'm not going to show any actual footage from these videos because, well, first of all, I think these are best experienced for yourself. But also, I don't think YouTube likes having actual footage of this on their platform. And so I'm going to stick to showing you guys screen caps and trying my best to just explain what these videos are. Basically what happens in these videos is there's this guy who has a camera who walks around the streets of Seattle and approaches random people and starts recording them. He doesn't ask permission to record, he doesn't explain what he's doing, he'll just walk up to a random person, pull out his camera, and start recording. Even when people start asking what he's doing, he still does not elaborate. For the most part, he actually remains pretty silent. Occasionally he'll make like some grunting noises, sometimes he'll say, I'm just taking a video and no further elaboration just I'm just taking a video but for the most part it looks like he tries to talk as little as possible now obviously if someone were to just randomly walk up to you on the street and pull out their camera and start recording you with no explanation there are a lot of different ways a person could react and an important part to mention about this is even when people start questioning what he's doing and start getting angry with him and start yelling at him his videos show him not letting up he continues to record and so, in short, the surveillance cameraman videos basically show a compilation of a guy walking up to random people and pulling out his camera and recording them without any permission or any explanation and seeing how they'll react. And my god, are there a lot of different ways people react to this. After he's been standing in front of these people for long enough and recording them, some of the people start acting really awkward and try and walk away from the camera. Some of the people he approaches and starts recording get really confrontational with him. Some people get kind of angry and yell at him to stop recording. Some people go as far to like try and bat the camera at his hand. There are a couple people he records on the streets that like start throwing stuff at him. There's this one clip of him recording a guy who's just like sitting in an RV and the guy in the RV climbs out and starts like chasing him. Now for the most part it seems like the person behind these videos made these videos mainly just because they're funny or interesting or because it gets views. But in a couple of videos he kind of lets on that there might be a little bit more of a purpose to these videos. In the very first surveillance cameraman video, the surveillance cameraman is on a college campus and he randomly walks into a room. In this room, there's two people studying. It looks like they're probably a couple. They're kind of just minding their own business and the surveillance cameraman doesn't hesitate to walk right up to them, put a camera in their face and start recording them. Now, of course, there's this pretty awkward back and forth between the surveillance cameraman and the guy he's recording. And the guy being recorded eventually starts asking why the surveillance cameraman is recording them. What's the point of it? And then the surveillance cameraman says this. Why are you so worried about it? I'm not worried. You're just being annoying. Look we'll at this way. You ever go out, you ever go to the grocery store? You know, there's like surveillance cameras everywhere. Yeah. It's not a big deal. Okay. Well, just a video. I mean, and so because of this, some people online seem to kind of think that the point of these surveillance cameraman videos is to make a point about how in the modern world we're losing our privacy and you can't really go anywhere without being recorded and people need to be more careful about protecting their privacy. And the point he's trying to make in these videos is pretty much anywhere you go will have a security camera recording you at all times anyway. And so why should you be concerned with a random person recording you with a camera? It's not really that different. Now, 
for the most part, I think these videos were made because the person behind them thought it was a funny idea, except for maybe one or two more occasions. He doesn't bring up this point about surveillance for the rest of the series. These videos might have been made with the intention of them being some sort of social commentary to some extent. I don't really think it was that much, but that's just me. Now, I have seen some people online claim that these videos might be fake. I found this one comment on Reddit from a long time ago where this person points out that one of the people in one of the videos looks like a man by the name of Dan Gerwich. Dan Gerwich is an actor. He's actually an actor for College Humor. Now, I haven't been able to find any actual evidence that this is Dan Gerwich, so it's probably just a look-alike. At the end of the day, from what I can tell, these videos probably aren't fake. A local Seattle news station even made a report on the surveillance cameraman. I had some concern by locals, maybe you or someone you know, uh, about a man who has approached them with a camera rolling, making them feel a bit uncomfortable. He's called the surveillance cameraman. R-F-T-K-O-H-I-A-H. So this is a pretty strange YouTube channel that's up right now. It appears that the acronym stands for Repent for the Kingdom of Heaven is at Hand. This YouTube channel is ran by a guy who goes by Hans Wormhat Online. And this isn't the only YouTube channel that he's had over the years. This Wikitubia page says that he's had at least seven channels. When it comes to this channel, there are a lot of things you could talk about. There are a lot of YouTube videos about Christianity and a lot of different conspiracy theories. There's some other stuff too. So I'm just going to go ahead and talk about the funniest thing. On this channel, Hans Wormhat has quite a few videos where he argues that certain animals are fake. He's got a video on pandas being hoaxes and emperor penguins and koalas and sloths and gorillas. He argues that these animals are just animatronics or fursuits or CGI. From what I can tell, it doesn't really look like he's trolling. It does look like he thinks pandas are a psyop. Pokemon Go Death Tracker. Of course, we all remember Pokemon Go, right? According to this article, Pokemon Go has been downloaded over a half a billion times at this point, and in 2021, it still had 71 million active users, which seems pretty solid. Honestly, I, I don't know exactly what they mean by active users, though. Anyway, these are some pretty interesting player statistics, right? But what do you think the statistics on Pokemon Go deaths are? Well, according to this website, PokemonGoDeathTracker.com, as of right now, 26 people have died and 64 people have been injured while playing Pokemon Go. This website even features like the specific reason for death, Incel Wiki. Incel communities hold a pretty undeniable spot in the online world nowadays. The Incel Wiki is a website that covers pretty much anything incel related. You can learn about the history of incels, you can learn about different terms that are used in the incel community and their use cases. You can learn about all the different pills you can take. From what I can tell, this website's kind of a mixed bag of pseudo-ironic stuff and stuff that tries to be more serious. The Loud House revamp. So of course, fan fictions are a staple of the internet. Pretty much any piece of media you can think of has a fan fiction of it you can find on the internet. But what do you think the longest fan fiction ever written is? Well, a fan fiction that probably should be mentioned when looking for the longest fan fiction ever created is The Loud House revamp. It's a Loud House fan fiction. Currently, this fan fiction is sitting at over 16 million 700,000 words. For reference, the entire Harry Potter series is a little over a million words, and work on this fanfiction started only back in November of 2017. Now, when it comes to this fanfiction, there are some things that are important to mention. First of all, this fanfiction is written in the format of like a script of dialogue. It's like a TV script or a theater script. And so reading this fanfiction and keeping track of what's going on is really hard. On top of that, it looks like this fanfiction has quite a significant amount of plagiarism. I would try and give you a precise idea on how much plagiarism there is in this fanfiction, but this fanfiction is so long that trying to get an accurate estimate would probably be like a month-long endeavor. And so when it comes to how much plagiarism there is in this fanfiction, I can't give you a precise estimate, but I'll tell you what I do know. First of all, what it looks like the author did for some of the earlier chapters in this fanfiction is they copy and pasted actual scripts from episodes of the Outhouse and just made edits to them where the author inserts themselves into the script and into the story. And so these chapters that are like this are essentially just slightly remixed versions of actual episodes of The Loud House. And on top of this, it looks like the author has at times basically copy and pasted entire articles into this fanfiction. For example, on chapter 820, the entire Wikipedia article for Hurricane Katrina has been copy and pasted into the fanfiction. From what I can tell, stuff like this happens 
happens quite frequently in this fan fiction. And like I said, I'm not entirely sure how much of this fan fiction is plagiarized content, but to make a long story short, if you're concerned with plagiarism, this fan fiction probably doesn't earn the top spot for the longest fan fiction ever created. But you know, at 2000 chapters, it's definitely a testament to the creator's dedication. There's a ton of original stuff in this thing too, and the story gets insane. Instead, the top spot for the longest fan fiction probably goes to this fan fiction called Ambience A Fleet Symphony. Currently, this fan fiction is sitting at a little bit over four and a half million words, and it doesn't look like this fan fiction has the same plagiarism issues that the Loud House revamped has. I should mention that there may be a longer fan fiction out there that doesn't rely on plagiarism or just copy and pasting text over and over again, but I don't know about it yet, so leave a comment if you're aware of it. Laughing Horses Orifice HQ. So Laughing Horses Orifice HQ is a website you can go on, and it's definitely a trip. This website is filled with crazy flashing imagery. You can click on pretty much anything. There are so many web pages to explore, and there's jumbled text everywhere. This website covers all sorts of conspiracy theories, conspiracy theories about the satanic elites, and trafficking, and mind control, and it goes on and on and on. This website has quite a bit of imagery on it that I can't show on YouTube. Now, I've seen some people online who say that this website is genuinely dangerous, and of course I recommend you navigate this website with common sense. But at this point, I think most of the fears of this website are kind of unfounded. It seems like some people online have been under the impression that this website might be leaking some secret government info or something along those lines, but I suspect everything on here is info that's publicly available anyway. I've been digging around this website for quite a while now, like on and off for like two years, and I haven't found anything that's actually bad ever. And this website's been available on the clearnet since like 2008, and if there was something legitimately wrong here, the FBI probably would have taken it down by now. At the end of the day, this website is most likely an art project. A website looking like this doesn't happen by accident. It would take a conscious effort to make something that looks this insane. And although no one on the internet seems to know who or what group is exactly behind this, there are a number of film professors and cinematographers and artists that appear to be connected to this website. And so most likely this is probably just an art project. Floating Chinese City. So back in 2015, a number of different news sources picked up on this video that you're looking at right now. It looks kind of like a floating city in the clouds, and apparently this video was taken in a city called Foshan in China. This video is pretty cool, it definitely captures your imagination. Looking around online, of course you can find some people claiming that this video is related to some conspiracy. I've seen a couple comments from people claiming that this video is evidence of Project Bluebeam. Quite a few news outlets that reported on this said that this video might be showing a kind of mirage taking place. A kind of mirage called a Fata Morgana. However, there's a pretty good chance that this video is fake. Beyond this video, there are no other videos or accounts of this taking place. There is no information on when exactly this happened, and who took this video, which all of this is pretty suspicious. And on top of this, some have argued that Fata Morgana mirages can't even look like this. Notably, Captain Disillusion has a video where he makes a pretty good argument that Fata Morgana mirages can't look like the thing that's in this video, and instead this video is just probably fake. Gang stalking. I'm gonna go ahead and explain this topic to the best of my understanding. I'm not an expert on this topic, so take everything I say with a grain of salt. Typically, when you see the term gang stalking online, it's referring to the idea that a group or gang of people is working together to stalk somebody. Now, this group or gang of people can be pretty much any kind of people. It can be your neighbors, it can be the police, it can be the FBI, the CIA, pretty much any kind of people. And online, there are groups of people who believe that they're being gang stalked. However, a common idea about these people, and an idea that shows up in research as well, is the idea that these people who believe that they are being gang stalked are actually believing in something false. In reality, they're not being gang stalked. Some papers have pointed out that there appears to be a community of people online who believe that they're being gang stalked, and these communities of people can actually be pretty harmful because they can exacerbate people's false beliefs about being gang stalked. Now, when it comes to why people believe they're being gang stalked, it appears that there are a lot of possible factors, so trying to talk about it gets pretty complicated pretty quick. In fact, from what I can tell, most everything involving gang stalking is pretty complicated, so I kind of feel like trying to discuss all these things in a brief segment like this would be kind of doing this topic an injustice, so we're just going to leave it off here and move on. Tulpamancy. So online, there's kind of a community of people who create tulpas. What a tulpa basically is, is an imaginary friend that lives in somebody's head, but it has a separate consciousness and a separate personality from the host to the point where
where it'll be said that it kind of becomes a completely separate person living inside of someone's head. On top of that, just to make sure I give you a good definition, here's the definition of a tulpa from tulpa.io. A tulpa is an autonomous entity existing within the brain of a host. They are distinct from the hosts in that they possess their own personality, opinions, and actions which are independent of the hosts and are conscious entities in that they possess awareness of themselves and the world. A fully formed tulpa is or highly resembles to an indistinguishable point an actual other sentient, sapient being cohabiting with the host's consciousness. You can find guides and outlines on all sorts of different methods you can use to create your own tulpa. People online will say that they don't just have one tulpa, but two or three or four. People will create original tulpas, but they'll also create tulpas based on their favorite anime or My Little Pony character or whatever. You know, some people will say that they didn't even create their tulpa, it just appeared in their head one day. Tulpas and tulpamancy is quite the rabbit hole you could go down. There isn't a whole lot of research into this whole tulpa a thing from what I can tell, and so the legitimacy of some of it is pretty questionable. Project Red Sun. So Project Red Sun is a supposed secret project that NASA had that sent secret missions to Mars back in the early 1970s. You can find quite a few different conspiracies about this online. Depending on where you see the conspiracy theory, it's going to be a little bit different. And although conspiracies about NASA's supposed secret missions to Mars in the 1970s are probably wrong, people have made some pretty cool hoaxes. Someone made this video that claimed to have been taken while on one of these secret missions to Mars, dead internet theory. So the dead internet theory is a conspiracy theory that you can find people talking about online. Online it seems like people kind of have different interpretations of this theory, and so I'm just going to go ahead and explain this theory based on how this post on Agora Road's Macintosh Cafe explains it. From what I can tell, this post is a combination of some stuff pulled off of 4chan and some new material too. Apparently this thread has been viewed over a quarter million times, which is pretty good numbers for for this website. The TLDR of this post, which I think summarizes the theory as a whole, reads, Large proportions of the supposedly human-produced content on the internet are actually generated by artificial intelligence networks in conjunction with paid secret media influencers in order to manufacture consumers for an increasing range of newly normalized cultural products. So like the theory is the internet's being propped up by an artificial intelligence and shills working for the government to help sell people more stuff and make more money. This post goes on to kind of further elaborate on this theory. This post goes on to say that in recent years, content on the internet seems to be a lot more sterile than it used to be, and people seem to act differently than they used to. And the post gets a little bit into how the government might have managed to set up this network. Now, is the internet completely being propped up by an artificial intelligence and shills working together? On the whole, probably not. But a lot of websites have their fair share of bots and shills. There are probably elements of this theory that holds some level of truth. Psychonaut Wiki. So the Psychonaut Wiki is a wiki that looks to document many different altered states of consciousness and methods and things you can do to achieve them. This website has stuff on lucid dreaming, psychoactive substances, sensory deprivation, meditation. The website has pages on pretty much any kind of physical, visual, or emotional effect someone could experience. And this website offers all sorts of tutorials and tricks and tips for Psychonauts. One of the more notable parts of this website is a section where people can leave reports on their own psychedelic experiences. Reading some of these reports are pretty trippy in of themselves. Project Glass Camera and Robert Golf. So this is probably one of the most random and obscure topics on this entire thing. This is basically a conspiracy theory. To make a long story short, kind of the context of where this conspiracy theory came from is on 4chan, someone posted one of these conspiracy theory charts, and one of the things that shows up on this conspiracy theory chart is the term golf rumors. So people were asking what this term was referring to, and it looks like someone on 4chan went ahead and said it's referring to this conspiracy. If you want to pause the video and just read the whole thing, you can. The super hyper condensed version of this conspiracy theory is the CIA and FBI had a secret project back in the 90s where they wanted to develop a way to spy on people in a completely undetectable manner. Of course, they couldn't use cameras or microphones because, you know, that's possible possibly detectable. Instead, what they did is they took people and had them use a supposed psychic technique called remote viewing, which would allow them to view a location or place in
in their mind without actually going there to gather intel. And then they built this piece of technology called the glass camera that would allow these psychics to project what they were seeing in their mind into a camera so other people could see it too. And for this project, they probably abducted a guy by the name of Robert Golf and forced him to use the glass camera. This whole conspiracy theory about Robert Golf and the glass camera looks like it was just completely made up on 4chan. Prior to this post being made on 4chan, I can't find a mention of any of this stuff anywhere else on the internet. So probably just made up, you know. Stinkymeat.net. It looks like this website was created by a guy by the name of Malin Smith, and this website documents something he did called the Stinky Meat Project. What's the Stinky Meat Project, you might be wondering? Well, it's this thing where he and a couple friends basically take some meat and leave it out in a random location, and they check up on it each day to see how bad it's spoiled and how long it takes for somebody to move it. And each day that they check up on it, it just gets worse and worse. They leave meat out on their neighbor's lawn, in a planter box, at a mall, at a park, and it looks like a couple other places too. And they check up on it each day and it gets worse and worse. Of course, it gets pretty gross. I'm gonna go ahead and blur it for this video, but there's nothing stopping you from going ahead and checking this out yourself. ForgottenLanguages.org So, Forgotten Languages is a pretty strange website. I'll try and break down what's going on with this website as well as I can. This website and the stuff surrounding it is honestly one of the strangest and deepest rabbit holes I've ever seen. Forgotten Languages is a website with a ton of articles on it, but you can't read any of these articles because they were translated into languages that were created by the people behind this website. Now, apparently, according to some of the people behind this website, the people behind this website have some sort of computer program that they're using to translate these articles into these languages that can't be read. Now, like I said, you can't read any of the articles on this website, but sometimes some of these articles will have snippets of English within them. Like, for example, for whatever reason, sometimes the titles of these articles will be in English, and it looks like sometimes when some of these papers are referencing other external papers that are written in English, then these papers will sometimes, like, use English quotes. And so because of this, some people have presumed that although you can't read any of these articles, if you read the bits of English that are featured in some of these articles, you can kind of get an idea of what they're about. And so doing this, it looks like the articles on this website are very weird. Some of these articles appear to be on very strange topics. I've seen stuff on like advanced military technologies, psychological warfare techniques, quantum mechanics, spirituality, aliens, artificial intelligence, and mind you, you can't actually read any of these articles because they're in a language that was created by this website. There's just snippets of English that are sometimes featured that will kind of point you towards what these articles are about. Now you might be thinking, wait a minute, what if all these languages that were supposedly made up by this website are just gibberish? Interestingly, it looks like some people have been able to translate some of these languages, but I don't know to what extent the languages on this website have been translated, and if all of them are even translatable. And so there's probably some legitimacy to these made-up languages, but I don't know how much. Could be a lot, could be a little. Now you might be wondering, what's the point of all these articles on this website, and what's the point of translating them into these unreadable languages? And do these articles have anything of actual substance in them, or is it all just nonsense? And who are the people behind this website anyway? And as it currently stands, I can't really give you a good straight answer to those questions. It appears that one of the people behind this website has claimed that part of the point of this website is they're trying to develop languages that can be understood by organisms besides humans or something like that. They're trying to develop a universally understandable language or something. And these articles are just part of testing or development of these languages. But I think I'm seeing conflicting information when it comes to that whole thing. On top of that, it also looks like some of the people behind this website have said that the point of this website is so they can secretly share knowledge with people around the world, but they're very vague about it and it doesn't make a lot of sense. I'm seeing possible problems with that explanation too that I'm not even going to get into. And then things get really weird because then you got people claiming that there's connections between this website and defense contractors, and then there's the whole YouTube channel you got to consider, and then there's this guy who might have falsified some archaeological records who's tied into this. It looks like some other people who were digging into this situation made this association chart for everything going on with the website, and although this might be a little bit overblown and kind of bloated, this thing might to some extent accurately portray what's going on with this website. Uh, there's probably stuff wrong here too. Now typically when I run across something like this online, my knee-jerk reaction is to think that this is part of some LARP or ARG or maybe some kind of 
massive scam, and I do think there's a pretty good chance that this is some overly complicated LARP or ARG or scam, but there is a lot of conflicting information about this website out there, and so it's been pretty hard to really cut through the noise and figure out what's really true about this website and what's just part of the LARP of this website. I suspect that there's enough information available online to figure out exactly what this website is, and I suspect I maybe just haven't connected all the dots yet, or I just happen to have not read the right forum thread yet, but as it currently stands, I don't really have a full understanding of what this website is, and pretty much everyone that I've seen online so far also doesn't seem to know really what this website is, but maybe in a future video, once I've finally been able to kind of cut through the noise and figure out exactly what this website is, I'll cover it again and just go over what's really going on here. Isabella Janky. So Isabella Reda Janky, I think that's how you pronounce her name, is one of the more prominent characters within Chris Chan lore. She was in contact with Chris Chan for a while, and she was allegedly looking to trick or manipulate them into doing some things that I'm not going to name on YouTube. She's also wrapped up in that whole thing that Chris Chan did that I'm not going to name on YouTube. It looks like it's a little bit unclear what her exact role in that whole situation is, though. Due to her involvement in the whole Chris Chan situation, she got a lot of attention on trolling websites like Kiwi Farms, and people on these websites found that she's been alleged to do a lot of gross and weird things over the years. Thanks to Janky's involvement in numerous controversies, she can now be found on the front page of the Chris Chan wiki. The Parasite Pill PDF. The Parasite Pill PDF is a PDF that's been floating around the internet for a little bit now. What this thing is, is it's basically a PDF that outlines a conspiracy theory about how a lot of people are secretly infected with a parasite that's making them weak. The whole conspiracy outlined by this document is super disorganized and pretty hard to follow. Ultimately, it looks like this PDF is arguing that this parasite is making people lazy and making people act like a hive mind and making them act like soy boys, and ultimately the elites are trying to push these parasites upon us as much as possible. There are so many leaps in logic. Like, right off the bat, the very first argument that this PDF makes is, isn't it strange that most animals need routine treatment for parasites, but humans don't? Isn't that suspicious? Doesn't that sound like the global elites are purposely infecting people with parasites? This document will sometimes be brought up in conversation related to parasite conspiracies online. I would not recommend taking any advice from this document. This whole thing is a mess. Don't take the worm pill. Dumbs. So in this context, DUMS is an acronym that stands for Deep Underground Military Base, and they're the topic for some online conspiracy theories. Now, the situation's a little bit complicated because, of course, the United States pretty publicly has some underground nuclear bunkers and some underground government infrastructure, and it wouldn't be unreasonable to suspect that there might be some underground infrastructure that's not discussed publicly. But there is a variety of conspiracy theories online that take speculation about this secret underground infrastructure to kind of an extreme. There's kind of like a branch of conspiracy theories online that refer to this underground infrastructure as DUMS, or Deep Underground Military Bases, and people throw around a lot of different ideas about these DUMS, and find stuff that's like these DUMS are super deep underground and super enormous. Sometimes it's said that these bases are not just in the United States, but all over the world, and they're connected with a giant network of tunnels. I've seen stuff that's like there's aliens in these things, and there's secret classified technologies in these things, like advanced genetic manipulation technology and whatever. I think this video that you're looking at right now is claiming that these dumbs are so big that this footage that you're looking at is actually taking place within one of these dumbs. It's so big an airplane can fly inside of it, I guess. You know, it looks like sometimes conspiracies about these things will tie in with adrenochrome harvesting and other conspiracy theories I'm not going to try and name on YouTube. And on the internet, of course, there are plenty of examples of more reasonable speculation about underground bases and stuff like that, but man, it gets pretty crazy sometimes. Help me, Susie's dying. So this is a very obscure urban legend. Online, you can find a handful of accounts from people who claim that at some point during the 1970s and 1980s in England, if you were to go into a public telephone booth and call a specific number, on the other end of the line, you could hear a woman in a monotone voice repeat the phrase, help me, help me, Susie's dying, or some variation of that phrase. 
is. There are very few first-hand accounts of this online. Some of the accounts of this online come from a magazine called The Fortean Times, which is probably not particularly reliable. I did find one comment online where a person suggests that this was just a test telephone number of some sort. From what I can tell, it appears that there isn't enough available information online to draw a conclusion about the legitimacy of this. The TED Talk There Is Nothing incident. What is the TED Talk There Is Nothing incident, you might be wondering? Well, I think it's something that was just completely made up by 4chan. If you look up the TED Talk There Is Nothing incident online, there's pretty much no discussion you can find about it except for a handful of posts on 4chan and some people on Reddit made some memes about it too. That's really about it. The earliest mentions of this I can find online come from 4chan, and people on 4chan make stuff up all the time, so someone on 4chan probably just randomly made this up one day. Here's the best explanation for the TED Talk There Is Nothing incident I found. Of course, if you want to pause the video and read it, go ahead. It's this story about how a scientist was going to give a TED Talk in front of a bunch of people. Then at this TED Talk, he ended up killing everyone and he opened up a black hole or something. And there was a big government cover-up to hide it. And it's called the it's called the TED Talk There's Nothing Incident. Three Orangutans, One Blender. So Three Orangutans, One Blender is a shock video that probably never existed. Basically, there's this YouTube channel called Persephone Rose that back in 2008 made a fake reaction video where they claim that they're reacting to a shock video called Three Orangutans One Blender. This video poses Three Orangutans One Blender as being this video where orangutans are thrown into an animal waste shredder and they apparently react to it in this video, but they never actually show any of the video, they just show themselves reacting to it. Now this video is incredibly fake. I'm not even gonna get into how fake it is, you can go watch it for yourself. But despite this video being fake, it looks like it kind of started some rumors about there being a supposed awful shock video out out there called Three Orangutans One Blender. Some other channels made their own fake reaction videos to Three Orangutans One Blender, and I'd imagine these videos probably helped perpetuate the rumors as well. Now, of course, you can find people online who claim that they've actually watched Three Orangutans One Blender, but I suspect these guys are probably just making stuff up, or they're just perpetuating rumors that stem from these fake Three Orangutans One Blender reaction videos. From what I can tell, this fake reaction video is the first mention of Three Orangutans One Blender on the internet. Well, that was it. Subscribing to the channel always really helps me out. Likes and comments are always really nice too. Got the Parallel Pipes Discord server link in the description. I wouldn't go there unless you're looking for some monkey business.